sisters welcome back as we continue our study of hymns and today we're going to pick the hymn right amazing grace just that first line right amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i know we've talked um recently about women and the lack of sleep but it's so funny. Every time I feel like, I, every place I go, I feel like I hear women talking about the lack of sleep. Um, and like I've said before, I'm sure men have issues with that too, but they have their own devotion. So we'll let them talk about it there. Um, I'm sure you have felt maxed out or spent totally exhausted. Um, it's probably just part of our human condition as women, right? Um, when we get like this, we can, we can feel disappointment or discontent even, too, rising up in, in within us. Um, I know, well, I personally, I can feel myself wanting to spit unkind words at the next person who does the slightest offense, right? Um, and I know part of this is due to the lack of sleep, but I also know deep down that it's my sinful nature, my wretched self, right? And... I, I've tried to do too much in life and too much on my own strength. Um, and this is when we have to fill our hearts, right, with that amazing grace. We have to receive it and to repent and to share it with others. Because God is calling us to believe the truth in Romans 5.20, where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. And... <laughs> You know, and, and I, I'm ashamed and guilty. Sometimes my gut reaction to things is very unchristlike, like um, And it makes me sad when I abandon gratitude and I can become very selfish. I get angry at myself when I let, my, when I let myself take control and have to do things my way and not listen to God. But I am sick with sin. But God meets me right where I'm at. And he can do that with you, too. Um, we're going to look up several Bible passages, but the first one, let's look up Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Least, now you guys can see how fast I can look up Bible verses, because I don't have any of these marked. <laughs> okay, Jeremiah. What are we, Ezekiel? There we go, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. And it's quiet. Okay, 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? But God doesn't want us to stay in that state, right? He doesn't want us to stay in the state of being deceitful and beyond cure. Um, he wants us, our eyes to be refreshed and our sight to be regained. Um, just like our, the song says, it's amazing grace, right? So what does that amazing grace sound like? Well, the Holy Spirit uses a gentle voice to ask us to let go of whatever particular sin we're relenting to, calling us to admit our weaknesses, coming into our hearts to replace the darkness with everlasting light. It's okay to admit our weaknesses. We all have them. None of us is perfect, so we might as well not even try pretending, right? Um, amazing grace sounds a lot like God finding us with that truth that we are completely, completely lost in sin. Read Luke 15. Take some time today and read through Luke 15. It tells us all about amazing grace. It's the calling of our hymn for us to come to him. This is the hymn of all hymns, right? I don't know a church body that doesn't sing Amazing Grace. Maybe there's one out there, but I haven't met one. When we're feeling wretches, 
when we're feeling unrighteous. When we hear the songs and the words that it talks about, we can feel God's grace washing over us. Just listen. Twas grace that taught me my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. So grace doesn't just, it teaches our heart to know right from wrong, but then it relieves all the fears we get from that. How amazing is it? God's grace shows us our weaknesses. It shows us that we're not enough to rescue ourselves from our own sin. But it also shows us that it is completely enough, more than enough, to cover all of our sins. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And that says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. How great is that? That we should so boast in our weaknesses. Do we do that? No. What are we boastful about? Our accomplishments, the things we can do well? But let's boast, sisters, about our weaknesses so we can show people what God's grace can cover. He can, that grace can bring us the rest that we are so fervently searching for. It tenderly reminds us that we are to worship in all circumstances and to worship him alone. Let's turn to Psalm 86, verse 11. Eighty-six, verse 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Isn't that just, just so what? Teach me your way, O Lord, that I will walk in your truth. Sisters, this grace that we are given is unmerited, undeserved, but it's unconstrained. This grace is for you and for me, for every single one of us. It's an invitation to rest in Jesus. Grace is an old, old song. It is one we get to sing today, tomorrow, and every day into eternity when we're saved in Jesus. And that is truly the most amazing thing. So ladies, on that note, <laughs> let us pray. Father, we ask you to continue to show us the offensive ways of our hearts. Allow us to see the deep need of your grace. You are more than enough for us. Please let us be content in that. Amen. Well, sisters, I hope you have a great blessed day, and I will see you very soon. Bye. Where's all my soul, sisters? Let me hear your flow, sisters. Hey, sister, go, sister, soul, sister, flow, sister. Oh.